Hello and welcome to part two of the tutorial for Jacob's Ladder Ripple Afghan. And this part of the tutorial is for the top, the finishing portion of the blanket. And what I have done is there are three special rows at the very last, the last three rows that you will work. And I have completed most of two of those. And again, in the description of this video, you will see links to the written pattern for this blanket and also for the first or the part one video on how to begin the blanket. So we have our foundation row. This is just an abbreviated blanket so we can see without a lot of work how this is going to go. Um, <clears throat> the first row is the foundation row that has double crochets here at the bottom. Then we have rows and you know, you'll have a full-size blanket where you'll have many many rows that have these chain 10 loops. And then the last two rows are exactly like all the other rows except that instead of chaining 10 we're just going to chain 6 on those two rows. So I have completed all but the very last set and so I had you know all these rows with the chain 10 then my first of the last three rows had a chain 6 and then this row is going to have a chain 6 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 then I'm going to do my double crochet 3 together 1, 2, 3 and do six double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then in the last stitch, which is actually the turning chain, the top of the turning chain, I'm going to do two double crochets. One, two, and a triple. Doop, doop. Now, the last row, as you're working the last row, you're actually going to stop as you get to each ladder and make the ladder by looping these loops. And then you're going to double crochet into those loops to hold them. And that's going to be what's going to keep them from unraveling is you're actually going to build the last row on top of those loops. I'm going to chain three and turn. So this will be the front of our blanket when we loop our loops. I'm going to do two double crochets in that triple at the beginning of the row. One, two, and then do six double crochets, just like we've been doing for every row up to this point. Two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to do three double crochets together. One for my valley my decrease to go into the valley. Now, before I do the next two double crochets, I need to loop my loops. So what you may want to do is actually kind of pull that stitch up, get a little slack so that you don't lose any stitches. Take your needle out so you can hold the blanket and you'll of course have a much longer blanket than my little sample here so you'll have a lot of looping to do but I can show you with just even these four loops how this is going to work. Take this first loop from that second row and put it over the second loop. Then you're just using your fingers take that second loop and pull it up towards you. Pull it over the third loop. Then take that loop, and pull it up, and pull it over the next loop, and you will do this again and again and again, all the way up to the top of the blanket. 
you'll keep putting the loop from the prior row over the next row and pull that loop up up until you get to the top. Now many people have pointed out correctly that at the bottom where there is a big hole. Um, if that big hole bothers you then people have come up with various methods of tacking that big hole together. Um, there really isn't a way to avoid that hole even in the original pattern for just the flat blanket that's a Jacob Ladder blanket. It has holes like that. Um, some people have like just taken a needle and yarn and kind of whipped that closed. On mine I just left the big holes but <clears throat> anyway um, you can read in comments on the blog what some others have done about the big holes. Um, at the top of the blanket you won't have holes because there you have your last loop. That was the last loop that I pulled through. That was from the last row. I'm going to pick up my stitch that I had let down. I'm going to do two double crochets into that last loop. And that will hold it and keep it from unraveling. Then I'm going to go into the next panel and do a three double crochets, do double crochet three together, which is the decrease for the valley on the other side. Then do six double crochets. One, two, three. Four, five, six. And now I'm at the peak, so I'm going to do three double crochets in the last stitch here before the loops. And then again, I recommend that you kind of just pull that stitch up, give yourself some slack so that you don't lose. Your, your, your stitches while you're looping and this is for the the ladder that's going to go up at the peak again the same thing take the first loop from the very first row and or it's the second row of the blankets the first loop row and put it over the second loop pull up the second loop put it over the third loop pull up the third loop just work all the way up the blanket. Continue to put the loop over the next row loop and pull the loop through up to the very top. There's that hole that bothers some folks and here's my chain of lat where I've chained up my ladders and it looks like a chain of stitches sitting on top of the blanket and then I'm going to pick up that stitch again that I dropped and do two double crochets into that loop. That holds it. Then I will pick up with the stitch and do three double crochets into that and then continue. And you'll just continue along that top row using the same process looping up those loops each time you come to a gap to make your ladder. So again, look in the description of the video for a link to the first video that explains the foundation rows and for the link to the blog that gives the complete written pattern and pictures. Thank you.